going on guys welcome back hope you are doing well in our last video we went over how to send a message from one user to the other and we implemented all of the back-end functionality and structure that's associated with that right so I'm not going to do another breakdown of that because we spent quite a bit of time doing it in the last video but what we're going to be doing in this video is fetching the messages um, and displaying them in the chat that we have with that particular user so for Batman, I need to fetch my conversation he has with the Joker. And if I'm logged in as the Joker, I need to fetch the conversation I have with the Batman. So we're going to be going over how to do that from both sides here. And then obviously how to implement the logic to make the messages show up in the correct spot for both users. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and get started. So um, we're going to go back to this message service, guys. And we are going to add another function here to fetch all of the messages that we have with that particular user. So I'm gonna create a function here and it's gonna be called observe messages. And this guy is gonna be a little bit different. You guys are used to seeing this functionality with async throws, but we are not gonna be using that here. We're gonna be using something called a completion handler or a callback. And I will explain why in a little bit. Let's just go ahead and add this as an input parameter to our function. It's gonna say completion and then at escaping and then add two parentheses, an arrow, and the word void, just like that. And within the parentheses, go ahead and add an array of messages. So some of you may have seen this stuff before, some of you may have not, but basically this is what's known as a completion block, and it's what we had to do with API calls before async await was introduced. I'm not gonna do a super deep dive into how completion handlers work, Gonna kind of just start uh, grinding through the code now, and I will give a brief explanation of how this works and the difference between this and async await. But if you guys want a more in depth breakdown of that, I have a link in the description to this video for how async await works and the differences between completion handlers and async await as well. So check that out, link is in the description. But anyway, let's keep going. So we need our current user ID. So we're gonna say current UID equals auth.auth.currentuser.uid else return. And then we're also going to need our chat partner, guys. So um, let's see. So we need to know who we're chatting with, right? So let's go ahead and add that as a parameter as well. Chat partner ID, which is a string. And let's actually add that first. So add that before the completion guy right there. So we have our chat partner ID and this completion handler right here. Okay. So now we're gonna uh, query the spot in our database we need to fetch the messages from. So we're gonna say let query equal messages collection. Oh, we need to make this a static function. Yep, messages collection. And then say dot document current UID dot collection chat partner ID. And then we're going to say order by timestamp descending is false. Okay, so let's break this down really quickly. I'm going to bring back the, the database really quick. So basically, guys, let's take a look at the path we're going down, right? So we are saying, hey, go to the messages collection and then go to the currently logged in user, right? So let's go there. So messages collection and then I'm logged in as the joker who I believe is this guy, right? So these are going to be all of the chats the joker has. And then when we're inside of the chat view with a particular user, we wanna drill down one step further and find the user ID of the person that we're chatting with. And then this will list out all of those messages, right? So we're saying go to the current user ID and then find their chat partner ID. And then we are going to order these by timestamp because we obviously want the most recent messages showing up at the bottom, okay? So that order by is going to look at this timestamp field and sort them accordingly for us. It, it, Firestore gives us the capability to do that, which is really, really nice. We don't have to do that uh, filtering uh, client side. We can do that in our database query, which is awesome. So next up, we are gonna add something called a, a snapshot listener, guys. So we're gonna say query.add snapshot listener, and then go ahead and hit enter on this guy. So we're gonna say snapshot, and we are gonna just say underscore on the error. 
So you guys might be asking, why are we doing this this way, doing this this way and not using async await? Well, it's because we need this snapshot listener, right? So basically, we're adding a, a snapshot listener to this collection here so that anytime a document gets added or a new message gets added to this particular structure in our database, it's going to send that notification to our application and, and give it the data that it needs right away. That's how we get that sort of real-time chat effect, right? We can't do manually have the user uh, try to fetch that data themselves with like a pull to refresh or uh, hitting a button, right? We need to get that information as soon as it gets added to the structure in the database, and that's what this snapshot listener does. So it, let's uh, let me just show you guys what the autocomplete says about it. So it attaches a listener for query snapshot events, right? So this is how we pretty much just get updates in real time from our database. So next up, guys, we're going to say guardlet changes equal snapshot dot document changes dot filter. And then we're going to add two uh, curly brackets like that and say zero dot type equal equal dot added. So basically, um, there's different types of document changes that can occur. You can listen for uh, deleted documents. So I believe there's like a removed option. There is a modified option. And then there's the added option. But obviously, all we care about here is messages getting added to that collection. So every time a message gets added, we want to immediately receive that information, right? We don't care about when the message gets deleted and messages in this case cannot be modified. So um, then guys, we're gonna say var messages equals changes dot compact map. Open up your curly brackets, uh, zero dot document dot data as message dot self. And I believe we need to add a try here. So basically guys, this is going to decode the incoming data, right? So when a, a message gets added to this, uh, this collection here, it's gonna send that information, all of this information down to our app. And then we need to decode all of this data that we get back into our message object, right? Cool. So next up, what we need to do is set the user object on um, that message. Right, so basically each message that's from someone else has to have a user attached to it. And why is that? So let me, uh, let me get rid of this Firebase stuff really quickly. Um, because we have user data that's associated with each one of these messages, guys, right? Like you can see their profile image and stuff showing up here. So we wanna make sure that we are attaching an actual user object to this message. So that's what we're gonna be doing. now. So we're gonna say, uh, for index comma message in messages dot enumerated. And then you're gonna say where message dot from ID is not equal to our current UID. So I'll explain this in a second. Let's just go ahead and say uh, messages index dot user oops, uh, messages, index.user. And we actually need the user here. So it's not just enough to have the chat partner ID. So let's go ahead and just actually pass that user along. So we're gonna say our chat partner here is a user in our um, input parameter. And then we're here we can just say let chat partner ID equal chat partner dot ID, right? And now we are gonna set that user right here. And then we are gonna go down here and say completion messages. Boom. So that is all we have to do, guys. Now we just need to go and call this function inside of our, um, what's it called, chat view model. And I'll do one more breakdown of this because I know that there's a lot going on here that might be confusing. Um, so I'm definitely going to break this down a little bit further and how this is working. I just want to I just want us to implement it and see it working real time. So let's go back to our chat view model, and here we're going to say uh, func observe messages, and we're just going to say message service dot observe messages, and our chat partner is just going to be the user, and we are going to hit enter on this guy here. And you guys will notice that this is the cool part about completion handlers, right? 
So this allows us to get the messages back that we um, from our, or this is just a different way of passing our messages along from our message service to this file here, right? Because we ultimately need to have a published property for our messages, which we're gonna add in a second. And we need to take the messages that we get back from our message service and use them here, right? So let's go up to the top and say at published var messages is equal to an array of messages. And we're gonna say self.messages.append contents of messages. And make sure you say append contents of messages, guys, and we'll go over why we do that in a little bit. Let's just go ahead here and say observe messages. So now inside of our chat view, we have our chat view model, right? But now we no longer want to uh, structure our for loop this way. We wanna say view model dot messages, and we don't need the ID property anymore. And now we're creating this chat message cell, and we have this is from current user guy. We don't need this anymore either. We actually just wanna pass the message along to our chat message cell. So here, let's go ahead and replace this with message. And here we can now say if message dot is from current user else. So if you guys remember, we implemented this property on our message guy. Um, so let's actually just go here and say private var is from current user bool return message dot is from current user. And that way it keeps our code a little bit cleaner. But um, really quickly, guys, if we hop back into our message class, struct we have this computed property that helps us determine if the message is from the current user or not so obviously if the from id is equal to the currently logged in user's id we know that it's from that particular user so for example everything you see here in blue this message has a from id and in this case it would indicate that the from id is equal to the joker's id who i'm currently logged in as which is how we know to put it on the right side of the screen with the blue background and the white text so that's our computed property there. Um, chat message cell, so this is looking good. Um, we don't have a mock message right now, guys, so let's just go ahead and comment out the preview. We don't really need it anymore. Um, and this should be good to go. So now back inside of our chat view, we are gonna go here and say message is the message that we are receiving from our view model. So I know that was a lot, um, but I think this should handle everything we need in terms of receiving messages from users and having it show up in the chat immediately, right? So I believe we had a chat with Batman. So awesome. So we get that one message showing up, but we need to remove the hard-coded data that we have in there. So let's see. Um, we have that in there somewhere, our chat message cell. Yeah, so let's go back to that and replace this with the message text, right guys? So go chat message cell. And we are gonna replace that with message.message .message text. And this is going to be message.message .message text. Perfect. So let's run this and go back to our chat with the Batman. Ooh, look at that. That's awesome, right? So this is where it's gonna get really juicy, guys. Let's go ahead and send another message. Test message. And if we hit send, we notice that it shows up immediately, right? So this is what I want us to break down um, and go over how exactly that's working. Um, if you guys understand everything right there and you feel like you're good to go, you can just hop to the next video um, where we're gonna go over how to actually display the user's recent messages. That's another uh, problem that we have to solve. But right now I'm gonna give a full breakdown of exactly how um, what we just did is working. Um, and there's also a bug we need to fix, guys. Um, we're gonna handle that in the next video. You guys will notice if you select Bruce Wayne twice, or say you select Steve Rogers, and then you try to select Steve Rogers again, it doesn't go over to the chat. You would have to select a different user and then go back to the original one you selected, which is kind of annoying, but it's a simple bug to fix. We'll handle that in the next video. But anyway, as promised, here is your explanation for how this is working. So let's go back to our message service and talk about this observe messages function. And I'm going to bring up uh, the Firebase database as well. So basically right now, guys, we are logged in as the Joker, right? 
So if I want to load all of the messages I have with the Joker and Batman, which is the only user I have a, con uh, a conversation with right now, let's just add, do one with Steve Rogers as well. Hey, what's up, Cap? Send, right? We see it shows up right away. That's great. And let's go back to Batman. We notice that only my messages with the Batman show up here. And if I were to go back to Steve Rogers, my, only my messages with Steve Rogers show up there. So uh, understanding the backend structure, once again, is important here. So we're going to the Joker right here. And this is his chat with Batman. This is his chat with Captain America. We see here that we, see here that we have two messages, right? And with Captain America, we have one message. So the, the functionality we implemented was to add a snapshot listener to these individual database structures, right? So every time a message gets added here, it's immediately going to send or push that data down to the client, which is the phone. And then I can download that data, turn it into a message and display it on screen. So that's how we get that real-time chat effect, right? So basically, guys, what's happening is if I go and send another message to Batman, another test message, if you keep an eye on this collection here, it shows up right there, right? And it's immediately as it shows up, uh, that snapshot listener recognizes that something got added to that database structure. And it, like I said, pushes that information down to our phone and we are able to display it here. So in the code, we just need to make sure we're querying the right section of our database, right? So in this case, it, it could be our chat with Batman or it could be our chat with uh, Captain America. But essentially, every time this chat view gets initialized, right, it initializes its own chat view model and observes the messages with that particular user. So back in our message service, we're adding that snapshot listener to listen for events or when things get added to that section in our database. We're making sure that we only care about the added um, document change type. We don't need to listen to modifications or removals. And this is where we get the data back from the document changes and map it into our messages. And then here we use this for loop to set the user object on each individual message. But we're only doing that if the message is not from us, right? Um, you could also just go here and replace this with a uh, message that is from current user. So this is an alternative way of doing that, right? You just want to make sure that you're setting the user on messages that are not from yourself, right? Because you don't care about the messages that are from yourself. You only care about setting the user object on messages that are not from you. So you can ultimately load that user's profile image and whatever other metadata about them that you want, right? So that's what this for loop is accomplishing. And then we just uh, call this completion handler that we have here, which is how we get the messages from our uh, message service over to our chat view model, right? It takes the this message guy, and passes it along in this like sort of block that we see right here. And then we can take those messages and append them to our published property that we have in our view model, which will ultimately update our chat view. So um, I know that's a lot guys, um, but you know that's as good of a breakdown as I can give you with how this stuff is working. I think if you really take some time to think about it, it's not too hard to wrap your head around. But anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. In the next one, guys, we are going to go over what we need to do to actually fetch and display recent messages for um, our users and then how to tap on these to go to our chats directly from here instead of having to do it uh, from the new message view. And then we also need to solve that bug that we were seeing up there. So that's what we're gonna be doing in the next video. Thanks for watching this one, guys. Peace out.